bodies for a few moments. So from your hands and knees, have your hands a little bit forward of your shoulders, tuck your toes under, lift the knees up and back into downward facing dog. Start to deepen the breath in both directions. And, and try to just feel, you know, exactly where and what this downward dog feels like. <sighs> And then come on forward to a plank pose. Bring your shoulders forward over your wrists. Have the arms straight up and down to the floor. And then really plug down through the knuckles of the fingers, the knuckles that join the four main fingers of the hands uh, uh, with the hand itself. And have the shoulders directly over the wrists. So the arms should appear vertical to the floor and parallel to one another. Lift your head a little bit and see if you can glide the shoulder blades down away from the ears. And then firm up the legs, make the legs nice and strong. Without lifting the hips up, move the belly button in and up. And then press back to downward facing dog. <clears throat> And then again, come forward into plank pose, shoulders forward over the wrists. Again, plug down especially through the index finger knuckle, which tends to pop up away from the floor for a lot of us. Glide the shoulders back away from the ears, look slightly forward, and then touch the knees, the chest, and the chin down to the floor. Slide forward into cobra, point the feet, glide the shoulder blades back and down. And then as you exhale, tuck the toes under, Move the seat all the way back to the feet first, and then extend the legs downward facing down. With an inhale, come forward into a plank pose. Again, straight arms and legs, really firm up the legs and firm up the abdomen, and then exhale, chaturanga. Inhale, upward facing down. Pull the shoulders back as you move the chest forward. Exhale, go back down, downward facing down. And then walk the feet forward towards the hands and hang forward over the legs. It's good to press the hands down into something. So if you don't have blocks with you, just bend the knees enough that you can press the hands down into the floor. That takes some of the, some of the load out of the structures of the low back. So that's, that's better than just sort of hanging out in space or dangling the fingertips. And if you do have blocks, then you could put your blocks under your hands and press down through the hands and the feet. But again, much better to have the hands connected into something rather than worry about how straight the legs are or something like that. And then go ahead and widen the feet. Bend the knees, come down into a nice deep squatting position. Hands together at the center of the chest, lift up in the trunk and the upper body. And then bring the hands down to the floor, raise the hips up, fold forward over the legs. And you can even kind of sway the hips a little from right to left. Feet are still a little bit on the wide side and then bring your feet all the way together, feet and legs together. Bring the arms behind the back and interlock the fingers together into one fist. Stretch the arms away from the back. With your inhale, bend the knees. Open the chest and look forward. Exhale, extend the legs to fold forward. Inhale, bend the knees. Open the chest and look forward. Exhale, extend to fold. Inhale, bend the knees. Open the chest, look forward. Exhale, extend and fold. Switch the interlace of the hands so that you have the opposite interlace happening. So opposite thumb on top and opposite interlace of the hands. Inhale, bend the knees, look forward. And exhale, fold. Inhale, bend. Exhale, extend. Inhale, bending. Exhale, extending. Good, release the arms. Tuck the chin to the chest. Slowly roll up to a standing position. And then go ahead and step forward. Stand towards the front part of your mat there. Oops. 
<laughs> okay, tricky. Stand towards the front of the mat and um, just close the eyes for a moment. So, uh, so an interesting, um, uh, an interesting study on uh, sort of emotional, the ability to sort of self-regulate emotions. Um, an interesting sh study showed that when we, um, when we sort of speak to ourselves about our emotional content in the third person, <laughs> it, gives us, um, it gives us this special amount of sort of distancing from our emotional state, which allows us to think more clearly, more compassionately, and more creatively about our, um, about our situation. So even if it feels so silly, <laughs> even if it feels so awkward and silly and you're like, you know, just inside your head, you can even laugh at the project inside your head if you like. Um, but just take a couple of moments to, to kind of speak to yourself about your own emotional content, but use the third person, so like say your own name, like um, Jessica is feeling lonely, Jessica is feeling um, anxious about the future, Just you know, in other words, just speak to yourself about your own interior content for a few moments. And even if it feels silly, again, sometimes these things feel funny if, when we first try them, but just see if in speaking about one's own experience in the third person, you could almost sort of bring about a, a little feeling of compassion inside, like as if, as if you were hearing about a friend's situation, as if you were hearing about uh, uh, someone else's predicament, right? And then, um, and then just holding that, that feeling in your heart for yourself. Uh, we'll take uh, three ohms, which you can, you're welcome to do out loud or um, inside. Ooh. Ooh. alongside the body, preparing now for Surya Namaskar or sun salutations. Bring the hands together. With an inhale, reach the arms up overhead. With an exhale, fold forward over the legs, hands touch the earth. Inhale, head and chest lift. Exhale, hop, step or walk back into Chaturanga, lower halfway down. Inhale, upward facing dog. Exhale, downward facing dog. Inhale, exhale, one, inhale, exhale, two, deep breaths, inhale, exhale, three, inhale, exhale, four, inhale, exhale, five, bend the knees, inhale, hop or step forward, feet to hands, exhale, fold forward. Inhale, stand up, reach the arms up overhead, hands pressed together. Exhale, release the arms. Inhale, reach up, hands pressed together. Exhale, fold forward, hands touch the earth, even if you have to bend the knees. Inhale, look forward. Exhale, hop, step, or walk back, chaturanga. Inhale, upward facing dog. Exhale, downward facing dog. Inhale. Exhale, one, inhale. Exhale, two, inhale. Exhale, three, 
Inhale. Exhale, four. Inhale. Exhale, five, bend the knees. Inhale, hop or step feet to hands. Exhale, fold forward. Inhale, stand up, reach the arms up. Exhale, release arms. One more time, just like that. Inhale, reach up. Exhale, fold forward. Inhale, look up. Exhale, hop or step back, Chaturanga. Inhale, upward facing dog. Exhale, downward facing dog. Breathe five times. Inhale. Exhale, one. Inhale. Exhale, two. Inhale. Exhale, three. Inhale. Exhale, four. Inhale. Exhale, five. Bend knees. Inhale, hop or step feet to hands. Exhale, fold. Inhale, stand up, reach the arms up. Exhale, release the arms. Inhale, hook thumbs, reach up and arch back. Exhale, bend the knees, swing the arms behind the back, place the hands together and fold. Inhale, hands to the floor, step the right foot back to lunge, lift your head. Exhale, step all the way back to downward facing dog. Inhale, forward into plank pose. Exhale, chaturanga. Inhale, upward facing dog. Exhale, downward facing dog. Inhale, forward into plank. Exhale, knees, chest, chin to the floor. Inhale, slide forward into cobra. Exhale, tuck the toes. Sit back towards the heels and then extend the legs. Inhale, right foot steps forward between the hands. Exhale, left foot next to the right foot, fold forward. Inhale, bend knees, hook thumbs, reach up, arch back, straighten legs. Exhale, bend knees, swing arms all the way around behind and fold. Inhale, hands to the floor, step the left foot back, look forward. Exhale, downward facing dog. Inhale, forward into plank. Exhale, chaturanga. Inhale, upward dog. Exhale, downward dog. Inhale, forward to plank. Exhale, knees, chest, and chin to the floor. Inhale, slide forward into cobra. Exhale, tuck the toes. Sit back towards the feet and then extend the legs. Inhale, left foot steps forward. Exhale, right foot follows. Inhale, bend knees, hook thumbs. Reach up and arch back. Exhale, stand up and release the arms. Bend the knees and reach the arms up. Utkatasana, chair. Exhale, hands to the floor, fold forward. Inhale, lift head and chest. Exhale, chaturanga. Inhale, upward facing dog. Exhale, downward facing dog. Inhale, step the right foot forward, turn the back heel down, reach the arms up for warrior one. Exhale, hands to the floor, step back and lower chaturanga. Inhale, upward dog. Exhale, downward dog. Inhale, left foot forward, right heel down, reach up, warrior one. Exhale, hands to the floor, step back, chaturanga. Inhale, upward dog. Exhale, downward dog. We're gonna do that one more time each side. Inhale, right foot forward, left heel turns down, arms reach overhead. Exhale, hands to the floor, step right into plank and bend the elbows. Inhale, move forward. Exhale, go back. Last times. Inhale, left foot forward, right heel down, reach up. Exhale, hands to the floor, step back, chaturanga. Inhale, upward dog. Exhale, downward dog. Breathe in. Breathe out, one. Inhale. Exhale, two. Inhale. Exhale, three. Inhale. Exhale, four. Inhale. Exhale, five, bend the knees. Inhale, hop or step, feet to hands. Exhale, fold. Inhale, bend the knees, reach the arms up. Exhale, stand up and release the arms. Good, now separate the feet about uh, inner hip width distance apart. So just about four or five inches or so. 
With an inhale, lift your chest and arch back, squeeze your elbows towards each other. And then exhale, fold forward, grab hold of the big toes with the peace sign fingers of each hand. Inhale, lengthen the spine, look forward. Even pull the upper arm bones a little bit more forward towards the front edge of your mat. And then exhale, fold forward, bend the elbows out to the sides, crown of the head reaching down in the direction of the floor. Breathe in, breathe out one. Inhale, exhale two. Inhale, exhale three. Inhale, exhale four. Inhale, exhale five. Inhale, lift head and chest. Slide the palms of the hands underneath the soles of the feet. And then exhale, fold forward, crown of the head reaching down. Inhale, exhale one. Inhale, exhale two, inhale, exhale three, inhale, exhale four, inhale, exhale five, inhale, lift, head and chest, look forward, release your hands out from under your feet, step the feet about as wide apart as the width of the mat, bend the knees, come down into a, a deep squatting position, Hands together, elbows inside the inner knees. And then reach the left arm out in front of the left leg and press the left hand down into the floor strongly. Push the upper left arm back against the left leg so that the weight of the leg isn't sort of shoving the left shoulder forward. And then reach the right arm up and back. Now everybody can take the right arm around behind the back. And then you can either stay like this or you can reach the left arm around behind and take a bind here. Inhale, exhale, one, inhale, exhale, two, inhale, exhale, three. Now we're gonna reverse it, we're gonna backtrack. So press the left hand down and then reach the right arm up. And then everybody come back to the center, hands to prayer. Reach the right arm in front of the right leg, press the right hand down, reach the left arm up and back. And then everybody can take that left arm around behind, and then you can either stay like that or reach the right arm behind and hold onto the left wrist with the right hand. Inhale, chest is open, exhale one. Keep looking over the left shoulder, inhale. Exhale two, keep pushing the left knee a little bit out away from the center line. For three, now press the right hand down, reach the left arm up, and exhale, hands together at the center of the chest. Lift up tall in the upper body. Bring the hands down to the floor, lift the hips up, and fold forward over the legs. And again, you can just sway the hips a little from right to left. And then bring the feet about halfway closer from where they were before and plant the hands down into the floor in front of the feet. I've got about six to 10 inches between my toes and my hands there. And then start to lift the heels up. Keep the palms of the hands pressing down. Lift the heels as high as you possibly can with the hands pressing down. Then bend the knees and see if you can squeeze the outer upper arm bones with the inner knees. Then you're going to shift the weight forward into the hands and see about lifting the feet up, either one or both feet. So you can practice lifting one at a time and then switching, or you can practice both at the same time. And then hop or step back into Chaturanga. Upward facing dog, and downward facing dog. Good, step the right foot forward, turn the back heel down, lift up warrior one. With an exhale, open your arms and hips to the side. Inhale, straighten the right leg. Look down at your feet and see that the right heel is sort of lined up with the inner arch of the left foot. And the left foot is angled inwards at a little bit of an angle. And then reach out to the left and place the, the uh, sorry, to the right, place the right hand in the middle of the right shin, about midway between the ankle and the knee, and reach the left arm straight up. Try to have one straight line with the arms, and then glide the shoulders down away from the ears. Now you can either 
continue to gaze straight ahead of you, or you can start to look up towards the left hand. With your next inhale, lift all the way upright to a standing position. Exhale, bend the right knee, reach down with the right peace sign fingers and grab hold of the right big toe. And then as you exhale, start to straighten the right leg again for a triangle variation. Now, if the right leg doesn't want to straighten all the way, that's okay. You can either keep the knee a little bit bent for now, or if you really must release the toe, you're welcome to. And then reach the left arm all the way over the left ear for kind of an extended triangle pose, giving ourselves an opportunity to, to open the left side seam of the body there. And then keep turning the hollow part of the armpit higher up towards the ceiling if possible. Even look under the left upper arm to help you turn the upper body more. Good, with an inhale, reach the left arm up and stand all the way up. Exhale, bend the right knee. This time, place the right hand down inside of the right foot and reach the left arm straight up. Now, we're gonna do something kind of weird here. <laughs> Place the right hand back about one hand's length distance so that your hand that used to be here, it, your hand is now kind of right behind where your hand used to be. And then lean the right shoulder back against the right knee, almost like you're trying to push the right knee like a millimeter behind you. Then as you exhale, keep the arm pressing against the leg and start to straighten the right leg. So it's almost like you're using the right arm to help you, to help assist that inner right uh, uh, inseam of the leg open. Bend the right knee again. Again, lean the right shoulder back against the right leg. Keep that connection as best you can and then start to straighten the right leg. Good, three more breaths here. Again, you're just using the pressure of the arm to help you kind of open up that um, upper right thigh area. And then bend the right knee, bring both hands to the floor, and step all the way back to downward facing dog. Other side, step the left foot forward, right heel down, reach all the way up. Open the arms and hips to the side. Inhale, straighten the left leg. Keeping both legs straight, reach all the way out to the left. Place the left hand in the middle of the left chin, right arm reaches straight up. And again, you're sort of pushing against the shin in, in, order to, in order to bring about sort of a lifted feeling rather than, rather than kind of dumping down into it like a kickstand or what have you. <clears throat> With an inhale, stand all the way upright. Exhale, bend the left knee. Reach down with the left peace sign fingers and wrap them around the left big toe. And then as you exhale, slowly begin to extend the left leg, even if it's not all the way. Inhale, reach the right arm over the right ear, extended triangle, <clears throat> and then turn the right side seam of the body even higher up towards the ceiling. Keep breathing deeply. With your inhale, stand all the way upright. With your exhale, bend the left knee. Place the left hand down inside the left foot. Right arm reaches straight up. Now move the left hand back about a hand's length distance. And again, lean your shoulder back against your knee. And then slowly start to extend the left leg, opening up from the inner left knee to the inner left groin. And then bend again, lean your shoulder back against your leg, and then straighten your left leg. Let the arm keep pressing into the leg. Three more breaths here approximately. Good, bend the left knee, both hands to the floor, and then step all the way back, downward facing to heart. Inhale, step the right foot forward, turn the back heel down. Lift all the way up to warrior one. And then with an exhale, open the arms and hips, warrior two. Good, straighten the right leg for just a moment and scoot the feet a little bit farther apart. So you're lengthening the stance. And again, look down and see 
that your right heel is approximately bisecting your left inner, uh, your left instep, and then bend the right knee again. Now, you're gonna challenge yourself to keep the right knee exactly where it is now. You're gonna reach the right arm up and back for reverse warrior. Left hand touches the left leg very, very lightly. Now, just glance down with your eyes and see that your right knee is where you think you left it. Sometimes it wants to kind of unbend as we move back into reverse warrior, but don't let it. So right shin still vertical to the floor, right knee still tracking the same direction as right toes. And then with an inhale, stand all the way up, straighten both legs. Exhale, bend the right knee, place the right hand down outside of the right foot, and then reach the left arm all the way over the left ear for extended side angle A. And anchoring down through the um, pinky toe edge of the left foot, and similar effect, you want to turn the chest more towards the wall you're facing and almost turn the left side seam of the body up towards the ceiling. Bring both hands to the floor now. Pivot your left heel away from the floor and then start to straighten the right leg. Then you're going to hop the back foot in just enough that you can get both heels anchored down to the floor. And both legs are still straight and then firm up the upper legs. So it's like you're bringing a grip into the quadriceps area here. Inhale a breath, exhale, fold forward over the right leg. Breathe in, breathe out. Keep pushing down through the center of both heels strongly. So it's like you're pushing, it's almost like you're pushing the heels kind of diagonally away from each other on the floor. Keep drawing the right hip crease up and back, spread the toes, relax the toes. And then bend the right knee and step all the way back downward facing dog. Step the left foot forward, right heel down, reach up warrior one. Open the arms and hips to the side, straighten the left leg. Move the feet farther apart from one another and also see that the alignment of the, of the feet for now is heel towards inner arch of back foot and then bend the left knee. Now again, challenge yourself to keep the left leg completely frozen in space. Try not to move the left leg at all. Reverse the warrior, reach up and back. Super light touch in the back hand, no weight there. Really straight and strong back leg. And then with an inhale, uh, straighten both legs, lift all the way upright. With an exhale, bend the left knee. Left hand goes outside of left foot. Right arm reaches all the way over the right ear. Extended side angle A. And again, you're turning the right side seam of the body more up towards the ceiling if possible. Reach down through the right heel and out through the right fingertips so you're like livening up that whole right side seam. Bring both hands to the floor. And then pivot the right heel away from the floor. Start to straighten the left leg. And then take a small step closer with the back foot. Both heels anchored down, firm up both legs, and then fold forward over the left leg. Parasvojanasana. Good. bend the left knee, and then step all the way back to downward facing dog. Bring the feet together, come forward into a plank, rotate onto the right hand and the outer edge of the right foot for side plank. Squeeze the legs together, flex both feet, Vashisthasana. Try to have one straight line with the arms, and see that their left arm is um, th throwing back behind you, but reach it straight up. Bring both hands to the floor and then rotate onto the left hand, outer edge of left foot, right arm reaches straight up, squeeze the inner legs together. Bring both hands to the floor and then lower the knees, the chest and the chin to the floor. Slide forward into cobra, tuck the toes, seat back towards the feet and then extend the legs. Bend the knees and look forward. Hop or step feet to hands. 
Exhale, fold. Inhale, bend the knees. Reach the arms up. And exhale, stand up, release the arms. Now, step the left foot back about a foot and a half, maybe two feet. Press down through both heels. And again, firm up both legs. So try to draw the energy of the quadriceps up the front of the legs. And then reach the left arm up. As you, press, as you reach the left arm up, see if you can press the left heel down even more firmly. And then as you exhale, take the left hand all the way across to the other side of the right foot. So if you need to, if you need to put a block there or one of your creative yoga props, whatever you have there at home with you, then do that and reach the right arm up. From inside your body, pull the right hip crease back and down. Keep firming up the back leg. The back leg is keeping you steady and stable and grounded here. And then lift all the way upright to a standing position and step forward. Feet together, other side. Right foot steps back. Press down through both heels, firm up the tops of both legs. As you reach the right arm up strongly, see if you can press the right heel down even more firmly. Feel that whole right side of the body now. And then take the right hand all the way across to the other side of the left foot. You can either reach into the floor or you can put something next to the foot so you can press down into that. And then reach the left arm up. And again, keep drawing that left hip crease back and down. And lift all the way upright to a seated uh, standing position, whoops, <laughs> and then step forward, feet together. Feet and legs start together here. Bend the knees and reach the arms up. Utkatasana, exhale, hands to prayer, twist to the right side. Press the palms of the hands together strongly, sit low. Squeeze the inner knees together. See if you can lift the inner ankle bones apart from one another so there's a little space between those little delicate inner ankle bones. And then bend the knees even more deeply. Reach the left hand down to either touch a block or touch the floor, right arm reaches up. And then step the left foot back into a long lunge. Right arm is gonna reach over the right ear, standing spinal twist. Good, reach the right arm up. We're gonna backtrack now. Step forward, bring the feet together. Press the palms of the hands together. And then keeping the knees bent, reach the arms up to the center and stand up, release the arms. Good, other side. Bend the knees, reach the arms up. Hands to prayer, twist to the left side, hook the right upper arm outside of the left knee. See that the knees are side by side. So the right knee here it sometimes wants to shift forward at the left knee. See that that's not happening. Sit low, drag the hip creases back, navel towards spine. And then reach down with the right hand and either touch the block or touch the floor. Reach the left arm up and carefully step the right foot back. Standing spinal twist, left arm reaches all the way over. And then reach the left arm up, step forward, feet together. Press the palms of the hands together. Keep the knees bending, reach the arms up. And exhale, stand up, release the arms. Good, now turn to face the, uh, turn to face any side, whatever side works for you. Step the feet wide apart. Hands on your waist. Look down at your feet and see that the outer edges of the feet are like parallel to the outer edges of the mat, which means the big toes are going to look a little turned in. Um, lift, your, um, lift your quadriceps up, so strengthen the legs. Inhale, lift the chest and arch back. Exhale, fold forward over both legs, hands press into the floor. Now with an inhale, push into the floor, lengthen the arms so that you can lift your head and your chest. And then see if you can tilt your sitting bones even higher up 
towards the ceiling behind you. And then keep that happening. Exhale, crown of the head down in the direction of the floor. Push the hands almost forward against your yoga mat, like you're trying to scrub the hands forward and see if that brings the head closer down in the direction of the floor. And with an inhale, lift your head, lift your chest, look forward, reach out and hold onto your ankles. And then holding onto your ankles, now pull on your ankles to pull the crown of the head down. Push down through the outer edges of the feet. And then lift the head and the chest. Now keep hold of your ankles. As you exhale, bend the right knee and shift the hips to the right. But for now, keep the outer left foot down on the floor. So both feet are flat on the floor. Inhale, come back to the center. Exhale, bend the left knee. Keep both feet flat down on the floor. Inhale, come back to the center. Exhale, right side. Inhale to the center. Exhale, left side. Inhale to the center. Exhale, right. Inhale to the center. Exhale, left. Inhale, lift up to the center. And then as you exhale, bring your hands into your waist. With an inhale, stand all the way upright. Good, and then turn the right foot out to the right. And again, see that the left foot is angled a little bit inwards, even if that changed at some point in the last few moments. Bring the arms up to shoulder height. Bend the right knee. Place the right hand down on the inside of the right foot, left arm reaches straight up. And then you're gonna bend the left elbow all the way around behind the back. Now you can stay like that with the right hand on the floor there. Or you could see about threading your right arm underneath your right leg and connecting the hands together. Or maybe you hold onto a towel or a shirt or a strap behind your back to extend the arms. Then look down at your right foot. Uh, pull your head back a little bit so it's like you want your head to hover over your right foot. And then you can shift your gaze over your left shoulder. Roll the left shoulder up and back. If you've got, if your right hand has a hold of your left wrist in the bind, then pull on the left wrist a little bit to straighten the elbow more. And then slowly, by pushing the, left, the right foot down into the floor, see if you could extend the right leg for bound triangle pose. And it doesn't have to extend all the way, even if your knee is a little bit bent here, or even if you have to release the bind of the hands, that's okay. Good, now you're gonna bend the right knee. Now turn the right foot parallel to the left foot and then see if you can get your feet, step your feet in so your feet are end up a little bit wider than the width of your hips. And then see if you can just push both feet down into the floor to straighten both legs for a moment. All right, here we go, it's the big one. <laughs> bend both knees. Shift your weight over into your left foot and see if you can peel the right heel away from the floor. See if you can peel the toes up away from the floor and balance on your left foot. And then press the left foot down. Lift all the way up to a standing position. If you lose it the first time, don't worry. Just try again. Come back into it if possible. If your standing leg is straight and your chest is lifted, then see about extending the top leg. Good, and then bend the right knee. Slowly bow forward, both feet onto the floor. Ah. Now we're gonna slowly backtrack. So even if you've lost the bind, you can still backtrack with us. You're gonna heel to the feet apart. You're gonna pivot the right foot out to the right, <clears throat> left foot in at an angle. Bend the right knee. Place the right hand down onto the floor. Push the floor away with your right hand and then reach the left arm up, ah, <laughs> freedom. <laughs> Lift all the way up to a standing position and release the arms. You know, that's, that's an interesting component of practice too, is like this idea of 
of contrast, right? So it's because we're kind of like in this bind, we're in this pretzely situation, we're all bound up and all tight. And then when we open again, there's that like sense of like freedom, that sense of release. Life is kind of like that too, actually. Um, so, you know, it's like once, you know, once we've all been sort of like contained and, and in solitude for a while, like that first sort of like breath of freedom at the end is going to feel, uh, is going to feel amazing, right? So reach the arms out to shoulder height, bend the left knee, place the left hand down inside of the left foot, right arm reaches up, right arm is going to go all the way around behind the back. And then the left arm is going to thread underneath the left leg. You can, uh, you can use a towel or a shirt or a pillowcase or something behind you to extend your arms if you let. Look down at the left foot, pull the head back so your head is more hovering over your left foot rather than in towards the inside. And then by pushing the left foot down, see if you could extend the left leg. Breathe a lot. <laughs> Don't forget to breathe into it. If you've stopped breathing, you've probably gone too far, so back it up a little bit. And then bend the left knee. Parallel the feet. See so if you can step the feet in about halfway so your feet are a little wider than hip width distance apart. Pause there as you can straighten both legs as best you can. And then bend both knees again. Shift your weight over into your right foot. Lift the right heel up and start to push the right foot down into the floor. See so if you can stand all the way upright onto the right leg. Straighten the right leg, lift the top of the chest. And then if the right leg is straight, you could see about extending the left leg, bird of paradise. And then bending both knees, gently place the left foot down, slowly backtracking now. We're gonna heel toe the feet out wide. Then you're gonna bend the left knee and turn the left foot out to the left. Press the right hand down, reach the left arm up. Whoops, right, uh, left hand down, right arm up, rather. And then lift all the way upright to a standing position. Hands on your waist, parallel your feet. Okay, so <laughs> how'd that go? Uh, still facing the direction you're facing, go ahead and come down into a seated position. Sit down. And open the legs wide apart. Take the legs wide, flex the feet, press the legs down into the floor strongly so that it's almost like you want to disappear the gap behind your knees. And then you can either start with your hands behind your back, lift your chest, or you can fold forward depending what's available to you today. If it feels like folding forward isn't an option, you're gonna lean back on your hands and just keep lifting the chest and just keep pressing the legs down into the floor. And then lifting all the way upright to a seated position. Uh, bend the right knee into the chest. Open the right knee out to the side. And then you're going to keep the hips kind of open facing the direction you're facing. So don't, don't like readjust in order to face the left leg or anything like that. Instead, you're gonna bring your hands onto the floor on either side of your left leg, and you're gonna turn the chest, turn the chest. So we're really getting some of that twisting action happening in the midsection of the body. Then if it's available, you can reach out and hold onto the left foot with one or both hands. Keep trying to turn the middle of the chest to face the left leg now. Now, from inside your body, push the right knee down into the floor and almost away from you. And then lift all the way upright. Extend the right leg out, bend the left knee into the chest, open the left knee out to the side. Fingertips onto the floor on either side of the right leg, and then turn your chest and turn your trunk. Then start to come forward over the right leg. You can hold the foot with one or both hands. And then again, from inside your body, keep turning the trunk towards the right leg. And 
From inside your body, push the left knee down into the floor and away from you. And lift all the way upright to a seated position. Extend the left leg out. Bend the right knee into the chest again and open it out to the side. So this time you're gonna take the uh, left hand onto the right knee. Reach the right arm up. And then try to keep the chest and the shoulders facing the direction you're facing, but take a big side bend. So reach all the way over towards the left foot with the right hand. Now, if you can't reach yet, just keep lengthening and reaching in that general direction as if someday the hand and the foot will meet each other. If you are catching hold of the foot, then pull with your left hand on your right knee, pull, and with your right hand on your left foot, pull. So that you're kind of using your hands and using your grip to turn yourself more underneath your right upper arm. Lift all the way upright and extend the right leg out. Bend the left knee, open it out to the side. Your, this, this part always reminds me of a game of Twister, you know, it's like right hand yellow, left hand blue, okay. So your right hand goes to your left knee. <laughs> reach your left arm up, and then start to reach the left arm all the way over in the direction of the right foot. Even if you're not catching hold yet, that's okay. If you are catching hold, then with each hand, you're gonna pull. So it's like you're just trying to pull the side seam of your body open more. Not gonna lie, this is one of my favorites. <laughs> I love side bending for whatever reason after opening up the sides of the body, I always feel better. Good, and lift all the way upright. Extend the left leg out to the left. Now bend both knees into the chest and open the knees out to the sides. And then holding onto the feet or the ankles, lift the chest. Plug the upper arm bones back and see if you can tilt forward while keeping the upper body uh, open. Uh, so try not to sort of like cave in or shrug inwards. Good, and then lift all the way upright. And then we're gonna cradle the right leg up into the chest. So try to hold your leg so that your shin is trying to become parallel to the collarbones. Flex the right foot, pull the chest towards the leg as you pull the leg towards the chest. And then if you haven't already guessed, we're gonna move into uh, compass pose. So compass is pretty tricky. It's another pretzel pose, <laughs> another pretzel pose. So if, uh, if this is already enough sensation for you and you're like, oh, it's too early, it's a little chilly, I'm feeling a little tight this morning, you're welcome to stay here. As you can feel, it's already a lot of leg opening. So feel free to stay here. Otherwise, I'm gonna slowly talk through the instructions. You're welcome to go as far along with me on that ride as you like for this morning. So the first thing you're gonna do is you're gonna take your right arm and thread it underneath your right leg. And then what I like to do is I like to take both hands and kind of, kind of hoist my leg up and over as high as I can over my right upper arm. Now, for you, that might, mean, that might mean above the elbow, right? But anywhere above the elbow is good. So start there and then press your right hand down to the floor. Flip your left hand over so you're holding the top of your right foot. And then start to lean a little bit forward. I'm gonna start to straighten my right leg as I'm leaning forward. And then I'm gonna sit back down and look under my left upper arm. Good, and then bend the right knee and come back to the center. Okay, so uh, <laughs> however you think that went or not is fine. It's all good. Um, I remember that was one of the first uh, poses that uh, I think like my first Jiva Mukti class ever, that was like the first pose that was being taught. And I was like, whatever, that is never gonna happen. Well, guess what? After years and years of practice, it does happen, okay? 
So now cradle the left leg up into the chest. Cradle the left leg. Again, sit up nice and tall. Imagine trying to pull your chest towards your leg as you pull the leg towards the chest. <laughs> sit even a little bit more forward than you might think. And again, keep, uh, again, you're welcome to keep it here. You're welcome to stay here. This is a critical sort of outer hip, outer leg opening for you to be able to come into compass eventually. So you're not, uh, you're not missing out, right? You're doing the work. Every little effort counts in yoga practice. Okay, so if you're moving on, then the left arm is gonna go underneath the left leg. And I like to hold my leg with both hands and kind of hike it up as high up over the shoulder as I possibly can. And then plant that left hand to the floor, flip the right hand over the top of the left foot. I like to lean so far forward that my left butt comes up off the floor and then sit back and look underneath the right upper arm. Okay, release that, come back to the center. Ooh, all right, turn to face front. Straighten both legs forward out in front of you and then fold forward, hold onto the feet with both hands or again, you could be using a belt or a towel or whatever you can find around the house there. Lift all the way up right to a seated position and then place the feet onto the floor. Separate the feet a few inches apart. Hands go to the floor behind your back. Shrug the shoulders up and back and puff up the chest and then lift the hips forward and up for tabletop and let the head go back. <clears throat> Keep breathing. Try to even out the weight between all four of the uh, legs of your table. So all four points that are in contact with the floor. and then slowly release the seat down to the floor and come into a child's pose. So we'll start with, um, we'll start with 10 breaths of handstand practice. If you have a wall available to you in your space, you could go ahead and move to the wall. I'm just gonna show what 10 hops look like, um, five, hops on the right side, five hops on the left side. So you're welcome, just follow along with me, or if you have your own handstand practice, um, go ahead and move into that at this time. So if you're practicing along with me, you're gonna start in a downward dog and walk your hands halfway forward. You're gonna lift the left leg up to start, and then bend the right knee, and we're gonna take five hops. Swing the left leg up and follow with the right. One, two, Three, try to breathe with it. Four, five, and then your switch. So left foot to the floor, right leg lifts up. Bend the left knee and hop. One, two, three, four, five and rest. So same idea, but now with the elbows on the floor for forearm stand. So again, if you have a wall available to you, feel free to go work by the wall. If you have a forearm standing practice, feel free to do whatever you're currently working on. Otherwise, if you're practicing along with me, I'm gonna show five hops on each side. So the elbows are on the floor. The toes tuck under, the knees lift up. I'm gonna keep my head a little bit lifted so I'm gazing at a spot right between my elbows. And then I'm gonna walk the right foot a little bit more forward, lift the left leg up. I'm gonna bend the right knee and hop. One, two, <laughs> three, four, and five, and then switch your legs. Five on the other side, you can do it. One, even if the hops are very small for now. Two, three, four, 
three, four, five, and come down and rest. Good. And then starting again on the forearms, you're going to clasp the hands together into one fist. Elbows a little bit narrower than the shoulders. Don't let the elbows go out wide. Tuck the toes under, lift the knees up away from the floor. This time gaze towards your feet. So if you're newer to headstanding practice and you just want to hang out here for a while and get used to being upside down or get used to the feeling in the shoulders, you're welcome to stay here. Otherwise, you're going to tippy toe the toes a little bit closer and try to set your head down on the floor behind your hands. So the back of the head is going to feel the wrists a little bit. Press down strongly into the elbows in order to lift the shoulders away from the ears. Keep the back of the neck nice and long. And then if you want to stay here, you're welcome to. Otherwise, you're going to bend one knee into the chest. It could be that for today's practice, you keep one foot on the floor at all times, or it could be that you bend both knees into the chest and then slowly extend the legs up for sheer shasana or headstand. Now, you know, honor your process, honor where you're at today. No, there's no rush. We have plenty of time to work on headstand over the next few days and weeks, and whatever it is. So please do your best, but also respect where you're at. And then bend the knees. Bring the knees towards the chest and then reversing one foot to the floor, both feet to the floor and rest. Good. Downward facing dog. Come forward into plank. Exhale, Chaturanga. Inhale, upward dog. Exhale, downward dog. Inhale into plank. Exhale, knees, chest, chin to the floor. Inhale, slide forward into cobra. Exhale, release the forehead down to the floor or the chin to the floor, whichever is more comfortable. Bring the arms alongside the body. Inhale, lift up, head, chest, legs. Shalabhasana. Good. Try to move the base of your skull a little bit away from your shoulders so the back of the neck is long. And then slowly release down. Bend the knees. Reach back and catch hold of the ankles. And with an inhale, lift on up. Bend chest knees. Good, and then slowly release down. Place the hands on either side of the chest, parallel the legs, lift forward and up into upward facing dog. Go back downward facing dog. Look towards the hands and step or hop the knees to the floor behind the hands and stand up on your knees. Hands on your waist. If your knees are sensitive, you can, you know, double fold or triple fold your mat under your knees or throw something under there. Hands on your waist. Pull your tailbone down so it's like you want your tailbone to point straight down between the knees. Lift your chest up. Squeeze your elbows towards each other. Keep your chin on your chest as you start to arch back. Now reach back with the hands and see if you can catch the heels or the ankles. And then pause there. Push the knees down hard as you lift the chest up. So it's almost like you're trying to stretch from your pubic bone to your solar plexus. And then see about taking the head back. Ustrasana, camel. Good. 
And then press the knees down, lift the chest up in order to stand up on the knees again. Point the toes, cross the ankles or the shins and sit down behind your feet and then lay down on your back. Bring the feet flat onto the floor, parallel and about hip width distance apart. <clears throat> Lift your hips, lower back, middle back, upper back. Interlace the hands together. Um, usually when we lift up into this, we sort of rock from side to side to wedge the upper arm bones behind. This time, see if you could press both arms down strongly and see if you could tuck both upper arm bones back at the same time, simultaneously. Good, and then separate the hands, release the back down onto the floor. And then place the hands on the floor either side of the ears. And we're gonna do, uh, we're gonna do three wheels. If you feel that you need to repeat half wheel, feel free to do so. Uh, so press down into the hands and feet, lift all the way up. Breathe strong. Long, deep inhales, long, deep exhales. After five breaths, lift the chin to the chest, slowly come down, rest. I like to have my knees come in towards the midline for a moment. Second time, so center the knees and the feet, place the hands into position, and then press down to lift up five breaths. Chin to the chest, slowly come down, rest. Last time, so place the hands, place the feet, third time. Word that on your asana, go for it, you can do it. And chin to chest, slowly come down, and then hug the knees into the chest. And then we're gonna take the knees over to the left side. So if you like to wrap your legs, you're welcome to wrap right over left, and then take the knees over to the left side. And then reach the right arm out behind you and look over the right shoulder, reclined twist. Bring the knees up to the center, unwrap the legs, rewrap them the other way, shift the hips over to the right side, look over the left shoulder. And then bring the knees up to the center. <clears throat> and then Couple of options here. We're gonna set up for either shoulder stand or the Karani. So shoulder stand, you're gonna reach the legs straight up, hands on your hands holding your back. If you're not taking shoulder stand, you have the option of taking Viparita Karani. So I'll show one variation of Viparita Karani. You would have uh, a block or um, a Harry Potter book under your sacrum and let the legs extend straight up. <sighs> let the, if you're taking Viparita Karani, let the weight of the legs kind of drop straight down into the block and let the belly sort of be um, parallel to the ceiling so that the chest can be really open get that nice chest opening. So whichever of the two you're taking, your legs are active and strong Feel like you could reach up almost through the inseam part of the leg. So if you're in shoulder stand, 
We're going to come into plow, halasana, legs behind the head, toes to the floor, reach the arms behind the back, and then push the thighs up away from the face. And then hands to the floor, slowly start to roll down to the back. If you were working on shoulder stand, you're going to come into fish or matsyasana. So lift the crown of the head to the floor, upper back arches, elbows pressing down, forearms pressing down. And then lifting the chin to the chest, release down just for a moment. Just feel the back body resting on the floor for a couple of breaths. And then you're gonna bend the knees into the chest and roll to the side. And then come on up to a seated position. <clears throat> and uh, take a comfortable seat for meditation practice. So we'll have a, a short meditation followed by Shavasana. So don't worry, you'll still get a, a rest at the end. As you're setting up your meditation seat, I just wanted to say a few words about um, the meditations that we've uh, been doing. Um, uh, all of the meditations have, so far have been variations on a, a Buddhist technique of meditation called metta. And metta simply means like friendliness or loving kindness. So it's a it's a meditation about sort of extending our compassion, extending our friendliness, extending our loving kindness towards others. And we've had, um, we've had variations of that all the last two weeks, some with working with specific, imagining specific people, some with imagining whole groups of people, even all sentient beings. Today we're gonna to focus on extending compassion and loving kindness to ourself. It can be challenging. In some ways, it can be the most challenging for some of us, right? Um, uh, so, you know, whatever arises, if it feels, um, even if it feels a little forced or a little inauthentic at first, that's okay. Just give it a try and, uh, and see what comes up for you. So start to kind of settle into your seat. And take a few moments to feel the movement of breath. And then in your mind's eye, in your imagination, place yourself sitting across from you. So you can visualize um, as best as possible the image of yourself, almost like a mirror image, but not, but not a mirror image, if you know what I mean. Like, put your real self kind of in front of you, yeah? And then we're gonna practice repeating sort of four phrases. And you want to speak the phrases silently in your mind, but imagine you are actually saying them to that person sitting across from you. May you be happy.
may you, Jessica, or fill in the blank, may you, Jessica, feel happy. May you be healthy and well. May you be safe. May your mind be peaceful and at ease. May you be happy. May you be healthy. May you be safe. May your mind experience peacefulness and ease. May you be happy. May you be healthy. May you be safe. May you be peaceful. And check back in with the movement of the breath. So just feel the breath moving in the body. And then make your way onto your back and rest, Shavasana.
Slowly start to deepen the breath. Bring some movement into the body. And the knees into the chest. And then rolling towards the right hand side. Come on up to a seated position. And we'll close the practice again with three ohms, which you're welcome to uh, do out loud or here on the inside. Oh. 